I'm Shamal Lane for twopeasinabucket.com and I'm here with the May edition of 4x6 Photo Love. Since it's the fifth month of the year, we're going to scrapbook five 4x6 photos and this month it's a double page spread, a two page layout. Now, not all of the months from here to December are double pages, but this month is. Um, so I hope you'll give it a try even if you usually are a dedicated single page scrapbooker. You're going to need five photos and four of them need to be landscape, so they're going to go all the way across the two page spread and then the fifth photo can be a portrait or a landscape because it's going to go on its own uh, in its own space so it can be either direction. So I hope you will join me um, to make this layout. I'm going to walk you through a second version of just this same design with different papers and colors and you have a month to participate in our challenges or you can join in with the class at any time. Uh, so let's get started on the second version of this layout for the May class of 4x6 Photo Love. So here's the original uh, layout, the first layout that I've done with this idea. And there are four landscape uh, 4x6 photos just lined up across the page. And then there's two areas of border. One below the photo with a that's a straight piece plus the punched piece across the top. And then a smaller or a thinner border across the top here at the top of the photos. Then we're going to have a space for journaling and the title. So if you can pick something that has lines or is quite plain, something that will be easy to write on, that will be this space here. And then the pattern paper that you use at the bottom will repeat in a block up here above the journaling. For the mat on this photo that gets a slightly special treatment, I've used the same paper that I used in the punched border here. And then there are three spots for embellishment. I'm adding one here, here, and here. But you can um, move them around to what's best for your photos. Okay, so with that in mind, let's get started. Now with the next layout, I'm going to use craft cardstock for the background. And I have my photos ready to go. Oops, this way. So I'm going to have these pictures that line up this way. Ah, these are in the wrong order. Well, let's go. let's swap these two here. There we go. So there's the first hard part. Find your four pictures and figure out what order you would like them to go in. And then the one additional photo is going to overlap the join of two of the uh, landscape pictures. Now if your photo is uh, very directional and facing the other way, you may want to swap the whole thing around and put it on this side. But I'm going to do this one just like the other one. So it's going to be over here. And then we need to choose some paper that's going to form the border at the bottom, the border at the top, and that punched piece there. So I'll show you what I've picked out. I really like the blue in these pictures, but I didn't want to pick a lot of blue paper because I want the, the blue in the photos to stand out. So instead I've gone with the orange and the yellow. So I have this a yellow dot, which is from the Peachy Keen Collection by American Crafts, and it's called Good Golly G. And uh, let's see, the other side of that, just so you can see, is a solid blue with a stripe at the bottom. And then for the orange, I'm using this one, which is from, again, American Crafts. It's Campy Trails Salmon Cove, which is an orange wood grain. And the other side is a... Um, very pale off white and cream stripe. I'm going to use the orange wood grain. And then a, a brown polka dot on craft, and it's it's actually on craft cardstock. And this is from the um, the Canvas Corp collection, which is a new new line in at two peas in a bucket. It's a nice, very versatile polka dot. And then for the area for journaling, I'm going to use this grid paper from October Afternoon, which is called Rock Candy, and that's uh, the other side of this one, and it's from the Five and Dime collection, which is uh, their latest. Okay, so those are the papers I'm going to use. 
I'm going to start by cutting um, the two strips that will go above the photos, and that's from this brown polka dot. Now there's no perfect uh, width that these have to be, but they have to be the same because they're going to line up across. So I just like to find a spot on my trimmer that looks good. Um, and this is about a half inch, really. So I have one on that side. And another to match over here. And then for the wider border at the bottom, I'm going to use the yellow. And this is about an inch and a half. So that's going to go below the pictures. Now I also want to go ahead and cut the yellow piece that's going to go across the top. And it's going to come and take up um, this kind of space here. I'm going to use a 12 inch piece. So it'll be this width, but it'll go over the join. And that piece is going to be um, five and a half or six inches tall. I'm going to go with five and a half. Just depends on where you want to place your photos if you want it a bit taller. So that piece is going to go up here. You can just start to see how this is going to come together. And then if, the, if this is five and a half, then this obviously needs to be a bit shorter for the journaling. So because it's a grid, I'm just going to eyeball by looking here and I'm going to go um, right here. I'll tell you how wide that is. Just a second. Let me measure it. That's about four inches. And I'm just taking a little bit off that so that this piece is now four by ten. And it's going to go right along there which leaves the orange. And the orange is going to go in a border here. So I'm going to punch that with the EK Success Double Scallop Punch. So you're just going to uh, make sure that you cut these so they're the same width because they're going to line up across the join of the two pages. And this photo is going to get a mat in that same pattern paper that I used here. And so as it's a 4 by 6 photo, you just want to add a little bit to, um, to decide however wide you want that mat. I actually like my mats quite small, so I just add um, about a quarter of an inch to the measurements and that gives me an eighth inch mat on both sides. There we go. So now you can start to see how all the pieces are going to come together. I'm going to pause for a second here because I'm going to ink everything here. I'm going to ink everything here with um, a brown distress ink. I just threw the lid on the floor. Okay. I'm going to ink everything here with Vintage Photo Distress Ink, and I used the foam on the ink applicator tool. Um, so I'll just show you how easy that is. So you just get a finished edge, and that way everything will match. So I'm going to go ahead and ink all of these pieces. Okay, so with all the pieces cut, then it's time to start adding everything to the page. So I've started by lining up my 4x6 photos and adhering them straight to the 12x12 12 12 background. And then what I do is I just line up the cardstock, make sure that it's square, and put the two pages side by side so I can add the rest of the pictures and make sure it's going to line up on the other side.
And that gives us our foundation and we can build the paper around there. Just press that into place. And then the polka dot strip at the top. Oh, because I'm going to put these other layers tucked behind the, the, um, the small strip, I'm going to go ahead and leave that one for just now and show you how I'm going to do the block across the top. Now this is the big block that's going to go right about here. So what I do is just take the one page away for a minute, line it up, and press it down, then turn this page over, and I just cut this side off with my scissors. Now sometimes I will have misjudged, so I've got all this space here that's not glued, so just while it's face down, I can add more adhesive and then just cut one line there and now I need to line it up with the other page there we go and the same thing with the journaling piece So now everything lines up across the middle and I can go ahead and put these strips over the top and then I won't have to pull them up because I've already put those other layers down. And then I want this to just overlap here a little bit, oh, right side up. And it should be slightly wider than this piece at the top. And just watch your placement here. You ideally want something in this space here that is okay to cover up. So I've got the, the flag showing there. I don't really want to um, cover up the top of the temple there. There we go. So there is the base of the layout. Now we're ready to add the title, the journaling, and the embellishment. For the placement of letters on a title that goes across two pages, I find it's easiest to just place the letters on the page without sticking them. And then once you get to the edge of the page, you can shuffle the letters along so there are no letters crossing over the divide in the middle of the layout. For this title, I'm using two different fonts in Thickers by American Crafts to spell out the name of the temple in Thailand. The smaller stickers at the top are by Lily B, and you get eight colors on a 12 by 12 sheet, and it comes in a few different color combinations. I've been using these a lot lately, and I've used them on the title and then also on the date for these pages. They're a really lovely size, and it, um, they have both numbers, letters, and they also have punctuation, which is useful. So there's the date in the bottom corner. And then before I do the embellishment, I'm gonna go ahead and add my journaling here in uh, on the, the lined paper here. And I'm going to go ahead and write all the way across and just stop when I get to the title. Now it's time for the fun part, some embellishment. I'm going to start the embellishment with some tape. This is the new washi tape from Hamley Screen Prints. And this is in a yellow uh, lace pattern. I'm going to add it in a few places. I'm going to add some just along here. I'm just going to tuck this under the letter there. I'm 
And also some here, not quite as much. And then I also want to add some up here, but I want to bring a little bit more color in here so it's not just yellow and yellow and yellow. So I'm going to uh, cut a little bit more of this orange. Oh, no, I'll go with the brown polka dot. A bit more of the brown polka dot with the same border punch I used before. And this time I, I just want a little bit, so I'm not going to use the whole width. I'm just going to trim this. So I can bring that color up to here. And I will need to use that same trick that I used before to line things up. So I'll place it on one side, turn it over, and line it up again. And then I'm going to add tape across the top. So these three spots are going to mark where I'm going to add the embellishment. I'm just going to put the layout aside for a second to make the embellishments themselves. You can use absolutely any embellishment you would like to suit your layout. The embellishments I made on these two layouts are quite similar. I started by stamping a label design and punching it out. The stamp set by Studio Calico fits the photo label punch by EK Success. By the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see all the supplies I used by clicking over to Two Peas in a Bucket. On top of the label, I added two circles, one plain and one pinked. These were die cut with nestabilities dies using the same pattern papers as the rest of the page. Then just something smaller on top. For the first page, I punched paper butterflies and topped them with adhesive pearls. For this layout, I added dragonfly charms held in place with more of the yellow washi tape. Now, I just have one finishing touch I've been adding to all the layouts that go in this album, and most of the layouts I've been making lately, and that is to use um, some Glimmer Mist, but to use it not with the spray, but with a paintbrush. So I just um, shake it up, and I, I tend to use this color sand because it's a uh, it's pretty neutral and works well on most colors. And I just take the paintbrush and go along some of the straight lines of the layout. And it's not meant to be perfect. It's meant to, to be a little bit of, of watercolor, but it also adds that bit of sparkle. And that's it. It's all finished. There are five 4x6 photos included on both of these layouts, one on craft and one on white, and you can choose any color you'd like. If you click over, you can also see two different scrapbookers interpretations, my guest artist this month, and you have a month to make your page using this design concept and upload it to Two Peas in a Bucket to be entered to win this month's prize. Thanks so much for joining me for the class this May.